All right. Well, today we are going to finish up the last three pages of our mini book. Um, mine are cut out. I cut them out before I decided that you shouldn't. <laughs> so hopefully you're still taking notes on full pages. We'll cut them out after this. Um, I hope you also have your proof sheets with you today because um, they are related. What we've done here is proving the rules. Now we're making shortcut versions so we don't have to go back to these giant sheets every time. Um, again, I don't expect you to memorize these, but I do hope you get better at using these rules as we go through um, the activities over the next couple of days. So we're starting with the power rules. Next, there's actually two rules on this sheet from our proof sheet. So we're taking two pieces of paper and bringing them down to a single mini book sized sheet. Uh, power of a power. So that was what we called here the power rule. Remember what we did? We multiplied the exponents in this one. Okay, so to raise a power to a power, multiply the exponents. I hope you made some good predictions there. What does that mean algebraically when we're looking at things that are just um, like this one? It is only exponents. Let me zoom in a little bit. Well, we have x times n raised to the m power. So we would just show that this is x n times m, or we could write it like this without showing the multiplication symbol. Remember when variables are right next to each other, that's also showing multiplication. So if we have an example with numbers, we would do four, that's our base. Notice the four is placed there. So we're only dealing with the exponents and we multiply them. So we're gonna show here two times five, meaning the answer is four to the 10th power. Okay, power of a power, this one goes with this sheet. And what were we doing here? We were distributing here. So each base is raised to the power. Let's not forget on this one, we want to distribute. Okay, so our example x, y is in the parentheses, raised to the m power. We would show that that is x to the m power and y to the m power. We're taking this and we are distributing it to both variables inside. The same would be true when they're all numbers. Four times three to the second power, that's all in parentheses raised to the fifth power that fifth power is going to get distributed to both terms. So we're going to show first four to the fifth times three to the second times five, right? Power to a power. So this is still times five because this rule is also a part of this rule. Partly why we put them on the same page together. Now again, we're not trying to find the giant number that this whole thing is. We're showing that we understand how to use the exponent rules. So the answer here is four to the fifth power times three to the 10th power. And we don't have to go any further than that. Great. Let's move on to our last two. You guys should have these on the same page together. Uh, negative exponents. <laughs> We did a whole sheet on this one, probably one of our most detailed, because um, it just takes a lot of work to show why this one works. This is one of those that I'm so glad I understand why it works, and I don't have to do this kind of thing every time. <clears throat> Rules in math are meant to be help us with shortcuts. That's really what this is about, just finding our shortcuts. So a negative exponent causes the number to be rewritten as the reciprocal of the original number, and the exponent becomes positive. So I referenced this when we were talking about our quotient rules. 
this final example here, if you had forgotten how to do it, this tab will be there to help you remember that in the future. So I've got a negative exponent here. I'm going to do the reciprocal of that. If this is all x to the negative over an invisible one, as all whole numbers, whole variables, everything is, then the reciprocal of it would be 1 over x to the positive n. When I flip it to the reciprocal, that negative exponent becomes positive. That's true here. This whole 3 would be over an invisible 1. So its reciprocal would be 1 over 3 to the positive fifth power. We don't like leaving negative exponents out there, so we turn them positive and we do it by using reciprocals. Okay, and our final one, zero exponents. All right, hopefully um, you guys were able to predict this one based on your notes. This goes with um, the same property. Let's see if I can find that proof sheet. Ah, too many pieces of paper floating around. I apologize. Okay, here it is. Underneath the quotient rule on this proof sheet, we also squeezed in zero exponent rule because they're related. And I just want to point out here, I know you guys have probably filled this out and some of you may have looked at my key, but I want to talk about this here. When you look at this, it's two to the third power over two to the third power. Think about everything you know about fractions that have the same numerator and denominator. If I have seven over seven, it equals one. If I have 12 over 12, it equals one. It's one whole. The same is true when it looks like this, when there's a base and an exponent. If that base and exponent in the numerator is exactly the same as the base and exponent in the numerator or in the denominator, it's going to equal one because it's a whole fraction. What we're doing here is we're showing that when you use the quotient rule, which is up here, with these special quotients, you end up with two to the zero power because you're losing both exponents when you follow the rule. But we still know that that equals 1 because this is a whole quotient. All right, so sorry I spent a little time on that proof sheet because I think sometimes people are like, I get it. I mean, I know that it's 1. I know that the word to write here is 1. I don't really get why it works. Well, I hope that that helped under explain it. So these examples are not the best, though. x to the 0 is equal to 1. 1,000 to the 0 is equal to 1. But then these practice problems are not necessarily for this um, property, actually. It's more just, it's the final examples in our mini book, and we're going to just do a little practice work. So let's show here. We have 4 to the second and x to the negative third raised to the second power. This is a power to the power, and we're distributing this, right? So this is going to become 4. 2 times 2 is going to give us, or uh, 2 plus plus 2 is going to give us the 4. I'm sorry, times 2 is 4. And then x to the negative 3 oh, to the second power is going to get us x to the negative 6, right? We're multiplying these and we're distributing. That's negative. This is positive. That means this is going to stay on the top and this is going to go to the bottom. Picture this is one whole fraction over a 1. I'm going to take the negative part of it and I'm going to move it to the denominator and make it a positive. This is positive, so it can just stay at the top. And that is the answer. 4 to the 4th over x to the 6th. <clears throat> this one also can look a little bit messy, but let's just talk it through. We have 2x to the negative 4, and we have 2x to the negative 4 here to the third power. So let's first take care of this. We also have to work with order of operations and we have an exponent to deal with here. This doesn't have anything, no parentheses. It's gonna stay as is for now. So let's rewrite this as two 
x to the negative 4. And the denominator is going to become 2 to the third because we're distributing. And x to the negative 12. We're going to take this 2. And all of this is going to get rewritten in the numerator. We've got 2 with an invisible 1 here, right? So that's going to be 2 to the 1 minus 3, because I'm taking care of this. And then I have my x's. And I have x to the negative 4 plus 12. Remember, when these come from the bottom, they switch. So this became a negative. This became a positive. I'm going to rewrite this down here. I'm running out of room. 2 with a 1 minus 3 is going to become 2 to the negative 2. x raised to the negative 4 plus 12 is going to become x to the positive 8. We're going to want to take this negative exponent and make it into the denominator so it's positive. So we end with x to the 8th, that's positive so it can stay, and 2 to the negative 2 becomes 2 squared. Remember, this is also still over a 1, and that 1 can become invisible <clears throat> when we do the reciprocal. So again, confusing, I know, but we're going to do some practice where doing problems like this become easier over the next two days. Um, I will be leaving some supports for you as well as a worksheet. But right now, um, your goal is going to be to put this mini book together and to get it stapled and glued into your notebook. So you want to make sure that you get the tabs put in order. Then you're going to staple it over here on the sides. And then you want to be gluing this into your notebook. Don't put too much glue all over the back. You don't want to shrink it up. Just put some glue around the perimeter and um, use that to work on your worksheet that you should be getting passed out now. Thanks so much.